Hi, welcome. I've made some old recipes doing these Portuguese videos, and this might be the oldest of them all. There's records of this dessert, queijada de Sintra, back as far as 1227. And the reason that it's known is because they used queijadas for rent payment sometimes. So there's actually ledgers out there, old ledgers they found, that'll refer to, don't forget to pay the landlord in queijadas, or the landlord requesting payment in queijadas. So really old recipe. Sintra is just a gorgeous town. It's only about 30 miles from Lisbon. You could take a train there, drive there. Definitely a great all-day trip. There's a few castles, beach areas, and just a gorgeous town. And there's a lot of history there, not only in the castles, but in the desserts that are made in that area. Although this dessert is known as far back as the 1200s, it really didn't start taking off until the 1700s, where Maria Sapa started making these like 20 dozen a day and selling them locally in the area. And there's actually still a queijada factory in Sintra that is started from that family, Maria Sapa. And if you want to try more than one pastry shop, like, like I often do, there's another one called Berequita, and it's been around since 1869. So it's been around over 160 years. It was founded by our, the baker, Amadio Dos Santos, and his wife, Constancia Gomes. And the legend has it that King Carlos um, his wife was very small in stature, and so King Carlos told them to name the bakery Perequita, which I believe means like small bird, like a parakeet. And so check out those two uh, if you want to get some original queijadas when you're in St. Tere, check those out. Okay, we want to start on the dough first because it's good to let it rest for about an hour before you roll out the dough. So we'll start off with a half cup of water. I'm going to use two and a half cups of flour two tablespoons of melted butter, one egg, just beat that up a little bit to help incorporate it better, one quarter teaspoon of salt, three tablespoons of sugar. So combine all the ingredients at first with like a rubber spatula or wooden spoon, and then we're gonna use our hands to form it into a dough. Now we get our hands dirty. The reason you let it rest for about an hour and up to 24 hours. You want to give it time for the flour to get fully hydrated from that little bit of water. And also, the longer it sits, the more gluten develops. Gluten is made up of two different proteins that come together. So that doesn't happen. There's no such thing as gluten, which means there's no such thing really as structure in dough until water is added. Those two different proteins untangle and start stitching together and form a nice, what they call a gluten network. And that's what gives your dough strength. So you want to give it time for that to happen. So like now it'll just rip apart really easily. But when your dough sits for a while, that gluten will begin to form. And that's a good idea to knead your dough for maybe five minutes. Let it rest for 30 minutes. Knead it some more. And then cover it and let it rest for an additional 30 minutes. So a total of one hour. It feels good. It's not too sticky. See, it's not sticking to my hands at all. And this fresh cheese I have, there's no salt added. So I'll, if salt is added to your cheese already, then you might want to put a little less in than what I have in the recipe. But you can see the consistency of it. It's pretty firm. And we'll compare that to cottage cheese. Cottage cheese is a little more wet. It's not as firm. The curds are a little bigger and not as smooth. So you can use a combination of cheeses because traditionally the Sintra cheese is made with cow's milk, but in a lot of other parts of Portugal, you know, it's whatever the local farmers are making. So sometimes the queijadas are made with cow's milk, sheep's milk, goat's milk. I definitely recommend for the recipe to blend up the cheese well just to make it a little smoother. And especially if you use something like cottage cheese or ricotta cheese, which is also a fresh cheese, to probably the best option there would be to put it in a food processor and really let that blade whip it up well and smooth out, you know, the curds. Okay, now we're going to make the filling for the queijada while the dough is resting. So I have the paddle attachment on my mixer. You could do this by hand too with a wooden spoon. It'll just take a little bit longer. This fresh cheese I have is fairly smooth, so I won't have to whip it up too much. But again, if you were using something like a ricotta cheese or cottage cheese, you want to make sure it's really whipped up fine to kind of smooth it out a bit. So first I'll put the two cups of fresh cheese and one and a quarter cups of sugar. Let that just mix up together. I'm going to put a half teaspoon of 
salt. This is also, don't forget to check out the website, justcookwithmichael.com. The recipes there are really easy to print out. You can search recipes by like dessert, recipes from the Azores, recipes from Madeira, recipes with pork. So it's just very well organized. And uh, there's some other tips and cooking techniques on there also. Here I'm gonna mix in a tablespoon of flour. I will also mix in one tablespoon of cinnamon powder. And the last thing will be the eight egg yolks. And my dough still has, it's only been about 45 minutes, so I'm gonna let it rest another 15, then I'll roll it out. You want to either butter your molds or your muffin tins or spray them with some spray oil. Have some flour next to you in case it starts to stick to your cutting board or granite. And you want it to be pretty thin. When you add flour, the dough will just slide a little better. It allows you to get a little thinner. So add a little flour to both sides. And you want to get it pretty thin, about a millimeter. So keep on working at it. As you work the dough, you'll see that it stretches, that it springs back. That's the gluten, the strength of the gluten. So sometimes you have to like maybe roll out one. I, I divided it in two. So Roll out one, let this one rest for a little bit, and then I'll work on this one. Because when that gluten relaxes, it'll allow you to stretch it out thinner. And now you wanna get a cookie cutter. Try to bring it up right to the edge. Just repeat this process with the rest of your dough. Okay, we have all our tart shells lined. The oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. As soon as we fill these, we'll get them right in there. Add a little extra dough, so I'm gonna make some more in a muffin tin. And just give that a little bit of a stir. Okay, now I'm just gonna make a couple extra that I have here. So we'll just line this muffin tin. So you want to cook them in a preheated oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 205 degrees Celsius for about 18 to 25 minutes. The shells on top should just start to look a little golden in color and, and if you have an instant read digital thermometer the interior temperature will be about 190 degrees Fahrenheit. The last step, if you desire, mix in three parts sugar with one part cinnamon and dust the top with that cinnamon sugar mixture. Give this a try for your family. Thanks for joining me. Now go cook for someone you love.